high. So raise your hand if you're feeling brutally depressed about politics right now and terrified for the future of democracy. I'm out there, you're out there. It's a scary time we're living in. I'm Erin, this is Queen Bee Tarot. Let's talk astrology. This is a really intense week, but also an amazing week because this is the week that we've all been looking forward to where the cork finally pops. And what I mean by that is that the tension over the last little while has been building and building and building and it's palpable. And all of a sudden we've got astrological combinations like this week where there is a full unlocking of energy. Let's see how it goes. So on Tuesday, we have Saturn direct. Saturn has been retrograde for months. And Saturn is the planet that represents status quo, everything that's been established up until this point. In a phrase, Saturn is the way things are. So Saturn refers to money, finances, resources, politics, stock markets, the whole bit. And being retrograde, what we've seen is a rethinking and a refocus and a reorganization of all these systems and structures. In a lot of ways, it feels like society and, and North American, American civilization is crumbling to a huge extent. And it is. It is because there are flaws, there are cracks in the system, and the way things are just isn't going to work anymore. And so while Saturn has been retrograde and there's been this whole redo, refocus action happening, um, a lot has happened. 2020 has been one of the most intense years ever. And as Saturn starts to move forward, starting on Tuesday, it is going to be an unlocking of all this work that we've putting in. And now it's going to be creating a structure that works for us in the future. So we are at this pivotal crux moment of change, turning from thinking to doing. The really sad part about this, with Saturn having changed its momentum, and move forward is that we have lost a lot of the best fighters recently. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, John Lewis, these people that were superheroes in the arena of politics and in the world in general, they started grassroots, they moved their way up. They were inspirational. They fought for truth, rights, justice, equality. And with them gone, there's this huge sense of despair. But what we need to remember is that as Saturn moves forwards now, it's a time for us personally taking ownership for all the change that we wish to see. And so this is a time, like all of 2020, has been all about drawing a line in the sand. Are we working for ego gratification, personal gain, material profit, or are we working in line with the highest karmic good? And as we drew lines in the sand throughout 2020, this week here is when our paths begin to split. And the ego path, as we can see, as it's playing out in American politics, the ego is struggling so hard to hold on to power that the ego is writing this narrative, a false narrative, of having power and having control. And as we get distracted, Neptune is retrograde right now. So it is super, super easy to get distracted by these false ego narratives and to believe it, to buy into it. Well, what if, what if Mr. Ego holds on to power and doesn't let the voice of the people have any meaning? You got to remember that the voice of the people is always stronger than the couple of people that are holding on to power. And if the voice of the people says no, that change must happen, change is going to happen. So have faith out there, you guys. I know that this is a terrifying time, but just like if we were doing a meditation and we were trying to center ourselves and our thoughts just kept wandering to a really not great place, the person leading the meditation, the, the recording that you're listening to, whatever, you would be guided to return to the breath. So I invite you, let's all take a deep breath. Sometimes I feel like I'm shaking. Sometimes it feels like it's just too much. And I bet you feel the same way too. Let's hold on together, you guys. It is up to us to create our own reality. And if we find ourselves being distracted and pulled off of center by ego, be it our own or somebody else's, 
Um, if we find ourselves being distracted by a narrative that is making us embody fear rather than being centered and breathing, then we know we've been distracted. Don't buy in. Neptune retrograde is a really hard time because separating illusion and reality is quite difficult sometimes. And especially with this age of modern media and having so much information thrown at us, it's really hard to separate reality, right? Saturn, retro or Saturn retrograde has been a time of rethinking what do we want our structures to look like? And Neptune retrograde has been inviting us to look at the ideals that we hold inside of our hearts, the moral compass that guides us and all of the decisions that we make, look inside for the answers. And when we find the answers of what it is that we want to see outside of us, it is up to us to take concrete action in however way that we are capable of in order to manifest this ideal, that we, uh, ideal reality that we would like to see. So we have been blessed, blessed with people like Ruth Bader Ginsburg and John Lewis in our lives for so long, fighting the good fight. And now that they're gone with this grief, with this heartache, with this pain, we must take action. Please make sure you're registered to vote. Talk to every single friend that you know, friends, relatives, neighbors, invite them to come with you. Register to vote. Come to the, you know, polling stations. Make it happen. The power is in our hands and no longer can any of us afford to give a second thought as to thinking maybe somebody else is going to fight for us. No. It is up to you to create your own reality and if you want change to happen, you got to make it happen. So that's politics. I'm a little politically um, involved, but because politics involves all of us, I do believe it's an important thing to be aware of and to participate in. Um, distractions are a part of reality, but the themes of use and abuse of power is all about Pluto. And Pluto is all about, um, it's basically either own your own power or you're going to be led by somebody else. So the more that we accept somebody else's story of what reality looks like, you know, that's possibly going to come into conflict with our own moral compass. So making sure that your own moral compass is strong is the number one thing. Make sure that you're focused in on, you know, living your ideals and, and also take those deep breaths when you feel yourself distracted from center. This is especially going to be important because on Thursday, we have a full moon in Aries. Now, the moon moves through the zodiac. Aries is the first sign. Pisces is the last sign. The moon moves through the zodiac in the period of about a month. And what we've done is the moon has brought us to an emotional state of awareness. The moon is emotions. And as it came through Pisces, the moon is in Pisces Sunday, Monday. And then it moves to Aries uh, Wednesday, kind of late Tuesday night, Wednesday. And then Thursday, we've got this full moon in Aries. So we're taking all of this awareness with us. And this awareness, the moon in Pisces, peaks with Saturn moving direct on Tuesday. So it's like, whoa, I know what I want. I know what I want to see in the world. I'm going to go get it. Full moon in Aries on Thursday is, yeah, I'm going to go get it. I'm going to make this happen. I'm not going to be an armchair activist anymore. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to vote. I'm going to make sure that if I see misinformation on Facebook, I'm going to call people on it. I'm going to make sure that my friends, my relatives, my family are all having things posted that are fact checked. You know, it's for the good of all of us. And if we have interactions, we need to be polite with our words. Mars and Aries is going to make us all feeling really feisty and really, really, really ready to defend our positions, right? but we need to always make sure that it's done respectfully. So this full moon in Aries can possibly be one of those breakdown or breakthrough moments. And if you found yourself super, super wound up, I invite you, I really invite you to work on those deep breaths as much as you can as the week leads up to the full moon on Thursday, because this full moon is going to be really intense. What I did was I created some charts and I drew up some charts for the full moon and what I do is I look at all the angles red angles are oppositions squares we've got trines we've got sextiles um, and so I started looking at this and I wanted to have a bigger picture of what's going on and I ended up researching the asteroids that are happening with this full moon and what we've got is this really intense asteroid Apophis that represents pure evil destruction chaos and it's going to be in the exact same spot as the Sun during this full moon 
So all the evil in the world is being illuminated to the point that you, you can, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. you can't help but see it. You can't help but have the veil lifted, your eyes open, your awareness brought to the reality of what's going on here. And there's so much pain happening in the world. So, so the sun conjunct this asteroid was this thing that I saw right away and I thought, wow, that's a really bad sign until I found this other asteroid that is also conjunct the sun. And, oh gosh, where did I put it? That's funny. Uh, Mercury is conjunct Sappho, so our minds are going to be all about uh, creating ideals uh, in the face of this harsh reality we're facing. And Saturn, Saturn is moving forwards, conjunct Chiriklo. And she was the wife of Chiron, and it's all about healing, healing from a place of love and hope for the future and not making decisions out of fear and not attacking our neighbors, but nurturing each other and lifting each other up in order to move forwards. Um, I'm trying to find the one about Juno, and I must have grabbed the wrong piece of paper when I was getting ready. Juno is an asteroid that figures prominently in this full moon. And what I wanted to talk about is the story of Juno. She was the wife of Jupiter and, she, and he cheated on her. He made so many babies with so many other little ladies. And the thing was that she didn't take her pain and, and turn it into a destructive way like her counterpart Hera. Hera obsessed over revenge for all the pain that had happened. She lived in this place of anger and it turned destructive and she became hateful and killed a lot of people. So basically the, the conjunction of Ju Juno that's happening in this full moon is all about taking the pain and not hardening our hearts and not letting ourselves be distracted by false narratives or ego and pushing that away and not inviting that into our reality. Our reality is all about what we choose to pay attention to, what we choose to give our time and our energy and attention to. And Juno takes all that pain and turns it into a nurturing energy of taking care of other people. And so what I saw with this full moon is that you can either use it to have your ego explode. There's quite possibly going to be something happening midweek politics wise. I can only imagine. Um, or this could be, see Aries is the first sign of the zodiac and full moons are culminations of energy. This could be the breakthrough moment where you start taking action and living this new life of actually being healthy, letting go of those relationships or those situations that were pulling you down. This is a week of change. It's going to be a huge week of change and how it manifests is definitely up to you guys. I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to make another video where I get in depth about all the astrology with the asteroids and stuff for those who really like to hear the technical stuff. But this was the gist of the energy. So happy Saturn direct, happy full moon coming up on Thursday. And I wish you guys all the best. This is Erin at Queen Bee Tarot. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.